Scene 72. Faramond, Altai, Zerinia race an attack helicopter to Arwat. They find the speedboat as promised, two seats in front and a bench seat in the rear for two more adults or three small bodies. They lay mom on the rear seat and the daughters next to her. I will sit in front, like a figurehead, keeping us safe from sea monsters and such. Karush straddles the pointed tip of the boat. We see dynamite dangling inches below his butt. Your cousin's little boat will come to no harm with me driving. Faramond starts to tell him about the dynamite. Yeah, about that. We have to die tonight, so... They hear the sound of a helicopter. A drowsy Mrs. Farad stands to jump overboard and then sees the daughter's... The boat lurches forward. She almost launches out the back, except Salar grabs her leg. He explains in Arabic. We are not going to hurt you. We are taking you to your husband in America for a new life. And a Winnebago. The dredger captain calls Captain Saracen. I am in place next to the boy, and my suction tube is probing. You have it then. Not yet? What are you waiting for? Now, Captain, or never. We cannot get a fix on the sub's exact location. We are groping blindly, quite literally. But we will have it in our control in a matter of moments. Scene 73. Sergeant Willie fights to control the steel cables. Sergeant Willie, on shore, holding tightly to the four retraction cables, is yanked five feet into the surf without warning. He loses hold of the satellite phone as he is drugged on his stomach across the coarse strand. Willie releases the cables just long enough to crawl back to get the phone. As soon as he has the cables secured in his hand, he calls the sub. What is happening? My team isn't here yet. I don't know. We just jerked like something pushed us. That dredger is really close. Maybe it hit you. No, that's not possible. The Bell Morsky only dispatches six meters of water, and we're at least ten. The cables had extended ten meters beyond the water, now only two meters, and Willie's feet are getting wet. Scene 74. Bravo goes into the deep. The speedboat is halfway across the channel when a Russian helicopter comes at it from behind, firing its 50-millimeter gun. Faramon leaves the boat. Willie is focused on keeping the cables and satellite phones above the water. Serenia sees Sergeant Willie first. He screams to be heard over the motorboat, helicopter guns, and the dull but high decibel roar of the dredger engine. There is Willie at 10 o'clock. What is he doing? Sergeant Willie is up to his waist in the surf. He loses hold of two of the four cables when the sub jerks again. He dunks his head into the freezing, turbulent surf, scrapes his hand along the bottom in a blind search for the errant cable. But the cables are being pulled out to sea, towards the left in the opposite direction of the incoming team. Willie sees the boat speeding at him just 90 feet away. Got him! At that same moment, the cables jerk left again, pulling them chest deep into the freezing Mediterranean Sea. Willie holds the cables under his left arm and jerks off a plastic bag Walker had used to plunk the cable. He wraps it tightly around the satellite phone, securing it with the same twine Walker used to improvise floats. Faramon. I will parallel the shore to make sure that I do not get the cable line. About 30 feet from the shore, I will cut to the right and get as close to Willie as I can. Ten feet from the shore, grab your lady, nosey it off with the rollout. There is a stick of dynamite taped under the front of the boat with a 15 second fuse, give or take, which I would like five seconds before we bail. All rough estimates. Dynamite? You waited until now to mention that there's a bomb under me? It seems to me that I recommended you ride in the back. When you said rough estimate, which part was rough? Fair enough. Go to the back and secure all the daughters. Take her over to the right side. I will take Mrs. Farad that leaves the baby to Rio, and I will go over to the left. I want to go on record that I am emphatically against lighting that. Theramon lights the fuse dangling directly below Zerinia's genitals. Zerinia leaps to the rear seat. We need to die tonight, here and now, or we will be hunted forever. And everyone fails. We're gonna keep in the water, take a deep breath, and hold on! The boat speeds out to sea for an additional two seconds, exploding eight seconds short with a 15-second fuse. Sergeant Willie is forced to float on his back just to keep his head above water. Less than a meter of cable remains, and they're sliding quickly through his hands. He is being drugged down and backward. A flash of light from the grand explosion helps to refine the cable that Walker has barely managed to keep above water. By the time everyone has taken a cable from Willie, no part of the cable remains above water. Willie screams into the satellite phone wrapped in plastic. Now! Now! Confirm this! He disappears into the dark water. 
1975, Bravo is pulled to the mini submarine. The pull to the sub is the longest 90 seconds of their lives. The origination of sound is impossible to identify underwater, but Sergeant Altai can tell they are getting close as the muted sound of metal hitting metal increases. 20 feet from the submarine, he opens his eyes to see nothing but turbulent water, residue, and darkness. Five seconds later, he looks again. Now he sees a tube connected to the top of the sub. It is pulling, rocking, and shaking the submarine away from his team. All are reeled into the airlock. Everybody is bouncing and bumping like rag dolls in a washing machine. Altai bangs the butt of his knife against the interior compartment hatch. It opens immediately, flushing seawater and eight bodies inside. Ladies are breathing. Scene 76. Altai exits the sub to deal with the dredger suction tube. The submarine is shaking violently and moving back in the direction where they had just fought to escape. Rio takes ten deep breaths as he secures his security belt around his waist and rolls back into the lock, holding the spare air apparatus. Put me back out. How will I know when to bring you in? You will know. If you don't, then it won't make any difference. The pilot closes the inside hatch and immediately opens the outer. Walker begins to attempt to resuscitate Mrs. Farad. As soon as Faramond and Zarinia catch their breath, they perform CPR on the drowned daughters while rolling and jerking like driftwood in violent surf. On the outside, Rio holds on to anything he can to keep himself attached to the submarine, working his way to the tube. He moves along by touch because with all the thrashing of the submarine, the visibility has reduced to less than two feet. He slashes at the tube with his dive knife in the right hand and holds on to the sub with his left. His legs trail to the left. If he lets go, he will never catch up because a large ship is pulling the sub much faster than he can swim. The tube is made of a flexible, thick, fibrous material with reinforced strands of spirally steel cable. Similar in design to a clothes dryer exhaust, it takes real 10 seconds to hack through the material with his knife and another 20 to pry the steel strands apart sufficiently to make a hole the size of a fist. When the hole is big enough for his fist, he retrieves one of the two grenades from his utility pouch. He puts it close to the hole and pulls his body up to pull the arm in pan with his teeth, but the suction is too great. His arm is pulled into the hole along with the unarmed grenade. He attempts to turn the grenade in his hand to get a finger through the firing pin loop, but the power of the suction is too great and the grenade shoots from his hand, unarmed. When his arm is sucked into the tube, Rio loses his hold of the submarine. He uses his left hand to take the last grenade. He raises it towards the hole in the tube. It is also inhaled before he can arm it. Sergeant Altai is lodged up to both shoulders inside the tube. His head is forced up. The spare air ejects from his mouth. His larynx presses against the tube. The mini-sub continues to be thrashed. Rio tosses like a doll for a few seconds until he manages to bring his left hand together with the right. He slides the safety pin, grasps the firing pin ring, and pulls. Four seconds pass. The blast not only stops the suction and releases Rio's arms, but the mini-sub recoils, slamming into the bottom, and bounces up, meeting Rio's body on the ricochet. Had the shell not been covered with her tiles, the collision likely would have killed him. The Belomorsky is burning. Rio is dazed. When his body slams against the sub, his last remnant of air purges from his lungs. Rio's unconscious body drifts next to the sub, both resting still on the sink. Walker abandons his drowning Farad child, grabs a spare air canister, and leaps into the evacuation chamber. Get me outside. Rio said that we would know when to bring him back. This is my cue. The outside chamber door opens. Walker struggles against the incoming tide of water to exit, but the force is too strong. When the chamber is mostly filled, he is able to push up. He hits something with his shoulder. From touch, you can tell it is Rio. He is not moving. He brought the spare air, but Rio is not responsive, so he can't use it. He drags the body into the chamber and taps on the shell with the butt of his knife. Near the shore... Captain Saracen lays in the bed of his pickup, watching the flame reflected in the clouds, pondering to his subordinate. I wonder if I will be placed in the same prison with people I have put there. 